Evan, as you have heard, real estate company Barfoot and Thompson has fired the staff member who leaked confidential sales data. Labor's housing spokesperson Phil Twyford released the information on TV3's The Nation, showing the number of sales to people with Chinese-sounding surnames. Phil Twyford is with me now. Phil, good morning to you. Good morning, Paul. Um, you seem to be implying that this person, male or female, was it a male or a female? I'm not going to talk about the, uh, anything to do with the identity of the person okay. who gave you me the information. You seem to be implying that this person mm. is some kind of a hero, that they did something for the for the greater good of everyone, whereas in reality they're just thieves. I think this person uh, did Aucklanders a favour. This is a debate that we need to have, uh, and the government has consistently denied there's a problem and refused to trust the people of New Zealand with okay, information. We know, that, we know that, and I think from the last conversation I had with you, I am not someone who believes that what you did was racist. I think that in, in the great void that has been left by the government where there is no information, this was probably something that was worth doing. But you cannot support what this person has done just because it's played into your hands. Mm. Look, I, um, I can understand why um, Barfoots feel the way they do. But remember that uh, as a company, they are making windfall profits, mega profits out of selling Auckland houses to offshore speculators. Well, good for them. That's their job. They're a company. They employ people. They're part of the thriving hub that is retail New Zealand. Meanwhile, while our uh, land and our houses are being sold out from under us, under this national government, uh, one real estate employee felt that the public needed to know what was going on because the government has refused okay. and, to provide and, the information. Right, and I understand that, but they behaved in a criminal manner, and it, I find it extraordinary that you are supporting them that and implying that they are some kind of a hero. You cannot support a staff member who passes on confidential sales data. That is at the very core of what that person signed up for when they took that job on. Part of my job as a politician is to make sure that information that needs to get into the public domain does so. Paul, you work in news. If 3 News didn't run any information that was leaked, there wouldn't be much on your news bulletins. Oh, and that may well be true, but I do not support leakers, you know. Now, we okay, may so use the information. If you hadn't used it, someone else would have yep. used it. So, Paul, so you I, can say that, but I think what we're well, seeing from you is an example of you handling this situation very, very badly. Are you going to resign on principle next time 3 News publishes leaked information no, or stolen but information? No, I would absolutely expect to be fired if I stole any information from my employer, and Look, so should you expect that. I stand by my statement that this, this person leaked this information with the best of intentions, they did Auckland as a favour. People are desperate to know what's going on in our housing market. The land is being sold from under our feet because the national government refuses to do anything about it. Why do we not have a foreign buyer register? Because this government has its head in the sand. It refuses to acknowledge it's even a problem. And uh, even though they were dragged kicking and screaming to a rule that says that foreign buyers will have to register with Inland Revenue, mm. they refuse to put that information into a register that's publicly well, it's searchable. Still, and it's also still quite, it's, it's still quite muddy. Um, it, it really doesn't result in a foreign buyer register. No, it it would take, even if it was decided, even the government said today, right, we'll have a foreign mm. buyer's register, it would take quite a long time to put that together, quite a long time before it was entirely useful, wouldn't it? We are. We've been asking for it for the last three years. And now the property market in Auckland is so out of control, it's at such a dangerous uh, tipping point mm. that almost anything the government does uh, is not making well, any difference. Well, according to you. I mean, I, I mean, at the end of the day, we, we suspect there is a problem. You've highlighted what could point to there definitely being a problem, but it's still, it's still very vague and largely as a, uh, a result of the fact that we don't have a foreign buyer register. Um, do you believe you've handled this badly? I mean, you look at the number of people that are sidetracked now by the fact that they believe that what you've done is racist. Mm. Um, n no, I don't. I, I, I regret that some people, because some critics uh, have willfully misrepresented the data and the things that we've said, I regret that some anxiety has been caused to people who think that we've been having a go at them. We haven't. Did you not predict that at all? Did Our, you not think there would be anxiety at all? We have fairly and squarely had foreign offshore speculators in our sites. That is the problem here. That's what we've been talking about for the last week. Okay, tell me, for the benefit of people watching mm. and listening to us now, mm. why is what you have done not racist? Because we have pointed to um, a problem of offshore Chinese uh, property speculation. That is happening right now all around the world. That's why countries like Singapore, uh, Hong Kong, uh, uh, Australia have all enact enacted limits and restrictions. Okay, but Phil, why is it not racist to present a list of Chinese names, common Chinese names, 
and point to that list as a problem for our country? Why is that not racist? We didn't point to that. We simply used the, um, the leaked sales data, which indicated that 40% of sales went to people of Chinese descent, as an indicator that the 9% of Chinese New Zealanders in Auckland couldn't possibly have been responsible for all those sales. It points to one conclusion, and that is we have a significant presence of offshore, non-resident Chinese speculators trading in houses. Why do you think people have on this whole racist bandwagon? Because I, you don't need to convince me. It's others you have to convince, mm. because I don't believe it's racist. I mm. think in the in the void that was created, as I said, you filled that void with the, in the best way you could. Um, why do you think it's been captured as racism? I think it's something about the way we debate or don't really debate very well these issues in New Zealand. You know, this debate's going on all over the all over the Western world at the moment. There is a tsunami of Chinese cash leaving China and it's largely being invested in real estate markets. And that's and, fact. That is not speculation. That yeah. is absolute and fact. That's and that's what we have to globally. deal with. That's right. That's what we have to deal with. We, the government has its head in the sand, but we need to talk about it. Because the upshot of not dealing with it is that the Auckland housing crisis is close to a tipping point. Our kids will never be able to buy a house in this town again. All right. Minister of Finance, uh, Bill English, uh, has been on two trips to China in three weeks. Crisis? I don't, I don't think so. Look, there's been some commentary um, in the media that this debate about Chinese property speculation is going to damage our relationship with China. Most of the people, the Chinese people that I talk to, including people from China, say they can't understand how um, this market is so uncontrolled and unregulated that we would allow, basically put out the, the welcome mat for offshore speculators to buy up our yep. land well, and our Mike houses. Well, Barford and Thompson, they're making money out of it and good for them because they're allowed to do it. It's all legal, isn't it? It's um, the government's just job very to quickly, fix Phil, it. Are you going to mm. give this person a job because you cost them their job? Are you going to give them a job? They're out, of, they're out of work now because of you. You've cashed in on them. Will you give them a job? This person acted out of the best of intentions. They did their duty, they believe, and I think they have done a favour to Auckland. But that's a no. <laughs> so don't knock on your door for a job. Um, all right, Phil, thank you very much for joining us. Phil Twyford, Labour's housing spokesperson. Coming.